Wait, what? That was Twitter's reaction last night when Kuo Ming-Chi revealed that his sources had indicated that the iPhone releasing just a few weeks would be the first capable of connecting directly to satellites in low Earth orbit. So what's it all about? I'm Mike Cave Dave and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you and if you want the latest Apple news, leaks and rumours every weekday at 12 UTC, like this video, subscribe to the channel and ring my bell. So is your iPhone going to connect directly to Elon Musk's Starlink from anywhere on the planet for super fast uh, online gaming? Not quite. Qualcomm, who make most of Apple's modems, are known to have worked with Global Star in the past. They are most likely the partner who Qualcomm had been working with to integrate their X65 baseband chip for the first mainstream satellite modems. In the iPhone 13, however, it seems that Apple has worked on a modified version of Qualcomm's X60 chip to add this low Earth orbit support. Now, Global Star itself was launched in 1991 as a joint venture of Laurel Corporation and Qualcomm, along with financial support from Alcatel, AirTouch, Deutsche, Aerospace, Hyundai, and Vodafone. Remember Alcatel? They were quite cool back in the day. And the first satellites were launched in February of 1998, but the failure of a launch in September of that year resulted in the loss of 12 satellites by Roscosmos. The initial 48 satellite constellation was then completed in 2000 with a limited commercial rollout. But since then, the old Global Star filed for bankruptcy in 2002 and has been restructured, moved to Covington, Louisiana, and most importantly, announced its third generation partnership project with a variant of 5G technology for low Earth orbit. So from what I can tell, these satellites are not likely to support high-speed data over the satellite anytime soon, but what may be more likely is being able to fill the gaps where voice calls and text messages would have dropped out in the past. While Elon Musk's Starlink from SpaceX is designed to replace point-of-access internet with a decently high-speed system, this is more of a backup system to reduce completely empty spots when no service was at all. So what could this look like? Well, we might see a third colour for text messages, where we'd have blue for iMessage, green for Android peasants, and I don't know, maybe purple for satellite messages. That would be pretty cool just to know when it's going over that uh, system. While it's a massive piece of news for what could actually be a smaller change in the real world, at least in the near future, it does point to some really exciting changes for what's coming in the longer term. It allows for future applications where downtime would have been disastrous to have genuinely reliable backup to keep things connected, like medical devices, keeping people connected while at sea or flying over the oceans, and when commercial passenger spaceflight becomes more of a reality than you know, a billionaire's plaything, keeping people connected up there too as these satellites become the cell towers of space. It's a pretty cool future and this is just the beginning. So let me know down in the comments if you're excited about the idea of space phones. What are we going to call this? Is it going to be ISAT? Is it going to be Apple Space? Um, and do we think that it's likely that Apple might just buy one of these companies. I could see Global Star just being bought out by Apple and them just owning the satellites. That would make sense. And, uh, you know, partnering with one of the launch providers to get their own constellation up there, Elon Musk style, with their own version of Starlink. That would be a pretty cool future. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. And we'll get into some IK answers. First of all, Evan Rogers. Hey Dave, can you do a full breakdown of your best guesses of pricing, including M1X, storage and RAM options, features, ports, display, speakers, design, and battery life for the forthcoming 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. Cheers and thanks. Okay, just a quick one to address then. But yeah, let's get into it. So I think we'll be getting our announcement for these new MacBooks in September, but I do think that they'll probably launch a week after the iPhones actually ship. Um, so I think we'll have our iPhones go on sale at the end of the week that uh, that they're announced. So around about the 17th, shipping on the 24th. And on the 24th is probably when you'll be able to start pre-ordering those MacBooks. So it gives Apple a little bit of a staggered release in terms of media coverage. I still think that we are probably looking at 17.99 for the 14 inch. I think we're looking at 23.99 for the 16 inch. Um, I think the 16-inch might just start on a higher um, a higher GPU point. I know everyone said that the performance will match, but that doesn't mean that all of the options might be the same. So I think we might start on the higher GPU model for the 16-inch, but it will be an option on the 14-inch. I think the upgrade on the GPU is probably going to be a $400 upgrade. That would make sense so that you go up to $2199, and then it's $2399, so it's a $200 change in terms of the 
just the pure display size. Then I think we are going to start at 16 and have a 16 gig and 32 gig option for the unified memory. I don't think 64 is coming. Sorry, Gurmy. I think the storage options, I've got a feeling they're going to start with 256 gigs of storage. I don't think they're going to start at 512. Um, I think it's going to be 256, 512, one terabyte, two terabytes, maybe four terabytes are the options here. I don't think we're going to get eight terabytes immediately. I think that will probably be added as an option down the line. But there's a possibility. Um, storage pricing normally jumps by $200 a go, so that's my best get. So hopefully that covers everything that you asked. I think it does. Frank Petri asks, can't decide between iMac M1 and Mac Mini M1. Heads or tails? This Vaseline is our coin. Uh, heads is iMac. It was Tails, go Mac Mini. Josh asks, IK answers, right now I have the iPhone 11 Pro and the screen size is a bit small. When the iPhone 13 comes out, would you recommend me getting it? If you're finding that the iPhone 11 Pro is a bit small for you, probably go for a 13 Pro Max. I really like mine. Um, I know a few people have said that it's uncomfortable in terms of the sharp edges to it. They're not sharp, but it is because it's a large phone. Um, it does push into your hand a little bit. So it's very much up to you how big of a screen you like. But if the, the 11 Pro is too small, I mean, go for a bigger one. You can always put it in a case. Josh asks, IK answers, would you consider getting the iPhone 13? What color, screen size, and storage? Also, please could I have a shout out? Consider this your shout out. Um, I would consider getting it. I don't know at the minute if it's something that I'm going to get. Um, but if I was going to, it would probably be the Pro Max again. I'm very much a fan of the big screen size. I'm very much a fan of the design that we have at the moment. Don't know what colors we're going to get, so I can't really tell you on that. Uh, but with my 12 Pro Max right now, I have 256 gigs of storage. And honestly, that's more than I need. I could quite easily manage with the 128. I thought it would be a tight squeeze using it as my main camera. But because I've got two terabytes in iCloud, it doesn't really matter to me. Alan B Unboxings and News asks, IK answers, how are you doing, Dave? I'm very good. I heard from the official Apple of Argentina that iPhones of this year are not going to be called iPhone 13. It's going to be called iPhone 12S or iPhone 21 or iPhone 2021. I don't think that's true. I think you've probably seen something that is uh, fake because it looks very much like it's going to be iPhone 13. Not sure why Apple of Argentina would be just reaching out to you with some information on it not being the 13 and then not telling you what it will be instead, though. David Black asks, I cave Dave, I've read some highly speculative German journalism speaking to a future for Apple where iPhone is replaced by some future technology. Will it be an Apple Watch with iPhone's current functionality or some other yet to be imagined device? While a post iPhone future is difficult to picture given how much revenue it generates, how central to Apple's product development roadmap it is and how indispensable either the iPhone or smartphones in general seem, what do you think a post iPhone Apple might look like? Or at least one where the iPhone is not so dominant among Apple's product line and services lineup. At this point I don't think the iPhone is going away anytime soon, although I think we will probably move away from it. No other technology is kind of stuck around in exactly the same format that it's in right now forever. So things will change. I'm not sure what the next thing is because I'm not here to predict the future. I just kind of look at what's existing. However, I think AR is probably going to be a big part of it. I think Apple Glass on your face is probably going to be uh, an important part of it. But I also don't think it's going to be for everyone. There will certainly be people that still want iPhones. The iPhone is growing massively right now, while Samsung's smartphone business is shrinking horrendously quickly, um, you know, to the point where they're kind of panicking behind the scenes, uh, whereas Apple has just bought 100 million A15 chips in order to be able to supply enough iPhones because people want lots of them. So right now, the iPhone isn't slowing down at all in a market where everyone's kind of getting saturated with uh, smartphones. So I don't think it's a problem that Apple needs to address right away, but I'm sure they already have what they're working on for next in the pocket. Now, it could be watch, it could be wearable, it could be the idea that most of the functionality moves to your watch. However, that's not going to be great for any kind of gaming. It's not going to be great for taking photos. It's not going to be great for making videos. Uh, you can't edit video on it. It's very, very difficult. So there's a lot of stuff that at the moment we would do potentially on our phones that you just simply cannot do with the form factor of a watch. So it suggests to me that that is not the form factor we're thinking of. The VR kind of stuff, or 
uh, augmented reality might be because you could project a keyboard onto your desk that's not really there and you could be tapping away uh, on a keyboard and a, a virtual mouse or a virtual trackpad that is just a regular desk. That would make a lot more sense in terms of a replacement for an iPhone than a watch. So that would probably be my best guess. Randomness R asks, I cave answers. Hi mate, can you contact your sources at Apple and have them make a seven to eight inch iPhone Pro Max for the 2023 to 2024? That would be awesome. I love the bigger versions of the Apple products and waiting for an 18 inch MacBook Pro. I'll continue to use my 2015 15 inch MacBook Pro until then, but I think this year is the last year that Apple will support it. Anyway, great show. Let me know which products you think will get bigger form factors in future. Honestly, I don't think we need much bigger than the current 12 Pro Max. I think that's a pretty huge phone as it is. Anything bigger than that and you're basically into tablet mode. So honestly, I don't think we're going to get much bigger than this. You know, maybe another 0.2 of an inch, but it's not going to be getting ridiculously bigger, I don't think. But then we all said this with the iPhone 4 as well. Marcin Kavalchek asks, casual eye cave answers. Favorite fruit and vegetable plus bonus question, pineapple, love or hate? So I'm a big fan of pineapple, uh, just not on pizzas. That is a crime against humanity. And blueberry is probably my favourite vegetable or fruit. Martin Cooper asks, IK Vances, will the new MacBook Pro 14-inch and 16-inch support MST for dual HDMI or DisplayPort adapters? I have two Dell 27-inch ultra slim monitors and would like to connect them using the new Cable Matters USB-C to dual HDMI adapter. This is a new adapter supporting 8K for one display and 4K for dual displays at 60Hz. However, the laptop needs to support MST and all previous MacBooks didn't support this. I would not hold your breath. I don't think it's going to be supported and it's not MacBooks that don't support it, it's Mac OS. So just assume that it will not support it because I'm pretty sure that's going to be the case, I'm afraid. Thank you all for your questions today. Don't forget, you can ask any questions that you want me to answer in a future show by using hashtag IcaveAnswers down in the comments section. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.